my mic was on there. Might have been on this whole time. Uh, sound check, one, two, three. How is this audio? I have a different setup than I've had before, so let me know in the chat. Coming soon! I'm starting soon! Auto-tuned and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. 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 Ah, wrong. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the coding train on a Saturday, April something or other. I have no idea what date it is. Time has no meaning anymore. How are you doing? 
I'm okay. I'm doing just fine. Thank you for asking. That's very kind of you. Let's all ask each other. I, you, there might be nobody next to you. You might be there. Might be like little small people running around below your feet, animals climbing on you. I don't know what your situation is, but turn to the wall, turn to the chair, turn to the small people, turn to the person on your left, on your right, and say, "How are you?" And from some appropriate distance, <laughs> give them some care. Um, let's care for each other in this very strange time. Uh, my voice is a little bit quiet, I'm being told. So let me see if I can turn that up. I, I've adjusted things in this setup, um, which I think are vastly improved, I hope. Um, welcome, this is the coding train. I hear the small people running, frolicking about in uh, where I live. <laughs> I've closed all the doors, I've locked the room. Actually, it's kind of nice when they're in here helping me, but today they didn't seem to want to do that. This Roblox thing is very, um, a very attractive, fun thing to play all day long, let me tell you. Is there coding in Roblox? Somebody let me know. Um, all right, I gotta w figure out, I gotta deal with the volume. This is a very easy thing for me to fix because I have n a new audio interface with a, what do you call this thing that you turn? A dial, perhaps. So here it goes, it is turning to the right, to the right, up higher and higher it goes. Did that seem to help? I'm also speaking louder. <laughs> um, let's see if that um, fixes it a little bit. Um, um, we'll see how that does. Settle down out there! Be quiet in the hallways! <laughs> Lua, I'm being told. Uh, uh, Roblox uses Lua. All right, so um, uh, so I'm 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 kind of settling into things here. I, I don't know if you remember the last time I streamed, which was I think about two weeks ago. <laughs> I probably spent the first forty-five minutes just like burying my anxious soul and like starting to sweat and not being sure what I was doing and feeling like I'm doing it all wrong, and that's okay. I think a lot of people are feeling that these days. I know that I am. I'm. Um, um, but I, I'm, I think I've got my act together a little bit more, and so I want to talk about what my, I want to start today's live stream with talking about what my plans are, at least for the next 24 <laughs> hours. That's about as far ahead I can plan, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, a bit louder still. Uh, my voice is fine now. Yes, it's a nice volume. Okay, I'm going to keep it like this for at least the next five or ten minutes, and then if I uh, see a bunch of messages that I need to adjust again, I will adjust. Oh, I have my stream open somewhere, and I'm now listening to myself from like 30 seconds ago. Let me mute this. Uh, this computer is muted now. Okay, much better. Um, okay, much better. Okay, so first of all, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Dan. This is The Coding Train. Uh, I don't know why it's called The Coding Train. To be perfectly honest with you, um, my sidekick, Gloria Pickle, who is a, um, an animal of the canine variety, is, I think, confused why I closed all the doors. Come here. Do you want to say hi? Hi. Can, you don't bark. This is the sweetest little dog that you can't see right now. I've got to get a camera on her, but I'm just going to open this door so she can get out if she wants. Um, so I, um, I am a person in the world who also spends a lot of time on the internet. Um, I make video tutorials about coding. I have a lot of difficulty coding. I find it to be very hard and stressful and complicated and fun and creative. And I try to share um, all those feelings that I have about coding with you on this channel. And in the past, I've done sort of like live stream lectures. I've done things like coding challenges. I make sequence tutorial content. I make one-off videos. Um, and uh, I think what I'm now going to attempt to do in this transition to work from home um, is I think I'm going to treat my live streams as purely just, I want to do this forever, just live streams. I'm just here live doing stuff, talking to you, coding things, teaching little topics, answering questions, showing your work, um, that kind of thing. So no longer am I going to consider things that I do in the live stream to be edited out into separate videos. I think this will make the experience of watching the live stream a little more pleasurable because I won't have this like artificial starting and stopping. I might come back and do that again when I'm back in that other recording studio that I have. 
Um, or I might do it again next time. But for today, I really, it's, I feel really just like free. I feel free. Like I could just hang out, code, talk to you, and just um, enjoy the next two. And it's literally just going to be two hours because at noon, I promised my children all sorts of fun activities that I'm going to do with them. Most likely me taking a nap while they play more Roblox. But no, hopefully I'm going to be a good dad today. We're going to play card games. I'm going to read to them and we're going to do an art craft project. It's so hard. I just, you know, I, after all of you out there who are feeling inadequate and you're not doing it right, I, I'm here with you. I'm right there with you. Um, so that's the plan. And so today, oh yeah, everybody is so okay. Okay, secret mystery is telling me if I don't turn my volume up, they're going. Oh, and we have a new member. So I want to talk about what, what I'm doing with the membership program um, also. All right, let me try to up the volume one more time. Okay, okay. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. I'm going to take more drastic measures. Okay, okay, okay. I'm oh, definitely not deleting this after it ends. <laughs> I mean, never say never, but let me, um, I'm just going to mute myself for a second, okay, while I check some settings on this. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Random numbers I should be reading. There we go. I see myself up in the yellow. I think this is better now. So I think I've kept <laughs> those couple of viewers uh, uh, that were uh, threatening to leave. I understand. I mean, you probably should leave. If the low volume is the thing that's bothering you, I'm going to do a lot more stuff that's going to bother you that you're not going to like. Um, but hopefully now the volume is better. Um, so just let me know if I'm peaking now because I, I turned it up quite a bit. I'm going to actually turn this down a tiny bit. Okay, hopefully I'm in good, uh, good shape now. All right. Crystal clear. Thank you, everybody. All right. So I think I talked about what the channel is, what I'm kind of planning to do. Um, I don't, I really want to have a regular time. I don't know if you guys saw, but I don't know if you all who are watching saw. I'm trying to um, not say you guys so much. Um, I don't know if all of you watching saw this, but there's a wonderful YouTube channel. I'm like the biggest fan. It's called Three Blue One Brown. And uh, everybody's getting into the live stream thing these days. And Three Blue One Brown is uh, math tutorials and all sorts of beautiful animations and things. I try to make a lot of videos that are inspired from that content. Did a live stream yesterday and I was just like, you know, I've been doing this for years and I could barely get it together and have like the sound right, have a plan, know what I'm doing, get us like a fixed time going. Three Blue One Brown, first live stream, beautiful quality, impeccable, amazing, regular time, banner with a time schedule. I mean, you should, if you, if you want to, uh, it, it was wonderful. So I'm excited to see more people live streaming. Uh, maybe there are some more collaborations and things that I can do. Also, there were 25,000 people watching a live stream math tutorial with like a notebook and pen. That was like, it blew my mind, which is great. Um, and um, according to this little button over here, there are 439 of you uh, tuning in right now. So hello and thank you so much. Let me talk about the membership program. So I've been feeling weird about having Patreon and members and things like that ever since I started doing it. Not so weird that I stopped having it. Um, you know, the, there's a few things. One, I should be clear, just to be clear and transparent, I have a full-time job. I'm very lucky and privileged right now, especially to still have my job. You know, who knows, uh, maybe um, there's a lot of issues with higher education and the cost of higher education. We'll see what happens uh, um, throughout the next uh, uh, year and so on and so forth. But um, so I teach full-time at New York University. A lot of the tutorials that I make, I use in my courses there. I think of them as the equivalent of uh, how somebody who's a teacher might work on a textbook and I'm just sort of making videos. So um, I have been going back and forth about putting um, ads on my videos uh, in terms of monetizing them on YouTube. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, uh, my sort of like rule of thumb right now is if it's a videos that I'm, that I'm using in a course or that are specifically designed for other curriculum, I, I take the, the ads off. 
because um, uh, so that teachers can show them in their classroom without uh, or assign them to students without them having to see ads. So that's currently where I am um, in terms of uh, the, that, that funding aspect of the channel. The other funding aspect of the channel is uh, patrons and members. So I'm, I have a, uh, there's a little button somewhere on the screen that says uh, join. Um, <laughs> uh, Kobe is asking me a question which I'm just going to say yes to. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, uh, <laughs> um, so uh, membership, this is my preferred way to fundraise for the channel because it doesn't involve uh, having to use advertising and the sort of industrial surveillance economy. Um, but, uh, um, so, uh, but I feel particularly weird right now uh, um, and a lot of people are struggling and there's a lot of need in the world right now. Um, so what I've decided to do for anyone who's think, been thinking of joining as a member, the benefits are in theory I mail you something like, uh, um, a coding train notebook <laughs> or uh, some stickers, which I have uh, over here. Um, uh, at some point, I'm going to make these laser etched uh, train whistles, but I have um, lost access to my uh, uh, laser cutter. <laughs> uh, so uh, that will be coming soon. Um, but um, what I am going to, uh, what I'm doing this month. Um, and thank you, I, I got this idea from uh, a podcast I listen to, Rob Has a Podcast, is I am uh, um, raising money for, um, uh, thank you to Christina uh, Zhu. Oh, you don't see, I'm not, uh, I forgot that um, I'm not showing you my screen. Uh, thank you to Christina Zhu, uh, I am, who, who, t who uh, turned me on to this particular charity, uh, Mask Force, which is attempting to raise money for PPE, personal, uh, protective equipment for uh, New York City, which is my local community here. Um, I uh, so I any 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 new members who join throughout the month of April, uh, whatever proceeds I get from that, I will donate to Mask Force NYC, and then I will also match that donation. So I'll be doing that for the month of April. I made a sort of donation in advance because I think the need is so great right now, and so we'll see if it catches up to that. And then if it goes above, I will donate um, additional money. Um, and that's what I'm doing for the month of April. And uh, maybe you will, <coughs> um, but you know, honestly, uh, if you uh, if you donate directly, that's a much better path. It doesn't need to like have the fees taken out and go through me and all that nonsense. But um, so that um, that's just one thing I wanted to mention that I am doing for this particular month. So. Um, and one of the things that I would like to do in my new sort of plan, I want to do more things that are interactive uh, with uh, um, the smaller kind of group of supporters. So I'm going to try to do a, a monthly discussion group. So if you've been thinking about joining as a member, that's something that we will do once a month. Okay. Blah, 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 begin today's coding train with the ceremonial reading of the random number book. <clears throat> also, if you're a musician, I could use some more music. I have this wonderful music. Let's try something relaxing. We begin today on the coding train with the numbers 40,743, 39,671, 7,812, and my personal favorite, 42,293. We will continue onward forth in our lives, programming with our random numbers with 41,539, 40,998, 95,829, 11,436, and 40,890, and 16,406. Ah, <sighs> don't you just feel better? I know I feel better. I always feel better when I curl up cozy with a book, playing some soft, quiet music, and reading it quietly out loud to 
487 people, which is down. That's down from where I started, which I completely understand, frankly, because, uh, I mean, I wouldn't keep watching this. I would tell you to go outside, but you should stay home. Usually I like to say, don't watch this. Go outside, be with people, enjoy the nature, the sunshine, the rain, explore. But uh, actually, right now, please, stay at home. Stay at home. Be safe. Okay, but you could turn this off and go, um, I don't know, um, do jumping, uh, uh, something else relaxing at home that doesn't involve a screen. But if you stay, here I am. I am I, I'm here with you. We're going to do some coding. I'm going to do some stuff uh, very soon. So my first segment in my new uh, trying to be organized, I, I even made an agenda here. Uh, so here's my agenda. Oh, I, hi. So check, check. We did hi. All right, so hi is done. <clears throat> now, your work. So I'm going to do something new. Um, if you aren't aware, uh, let me switch over to here. Um, if I go to, and I've changed where I am. I'm in the bottom right of your screen. Hi, I'm over here. I'm in the bottom right of your screen. So which doesn't work for my pointing at the code anymore, but since I use the P5 web editor a lot, I think this layout will be better. And I do have a green screen, so I could key myself out, but I don't know. Right now, I'm not doing that. All right. Um, if you go to thecodingtrain.com, um, you will think like, boy, this person really never makes any videos because the last one here is from March 14th. But it's okay. I'm, I'm working on stuff. First of all, let me, uh, you know, I, in case there are a few people who are totally new here, um, if you are a beginner and never programmed before, um, this uh, code program with P5JS, these are the videos that I would suggest. Um, and let me just move this over here maybe. I don't know. I'm not so good at this uh, layout camera thing. I'll, I'm working on it. Um, so these are the videos that will get you started if you've never programmed before. Um, but what, I, what most people have at least find the channel through or engage with the most are these coding challenges. And I'll t I can talk more about coding the cabana in a little bit. So these are the coding challenges. Every single coding challenge has a page for it, if I go to, to the challenge. And it has a list here of community contributions. These are <laughs> not over here. But if I look this way, I have to look over here. But my monitor's over there. I can't, I can't, I have to move myself back. I don't think I can take it. I don't think I can take being on this side. Deep breath, everybody. It's all going to be okay. I have two lights today. A light coming from this side and a light coming from this side. So I probably look a little extra pretty. Do I look pretty to you? Not really. Uh, <coughs> please make A-frame tutorials. Uh, Um, <clears throat> so, um, mm. so what I have done in the past is without any uh, real organi organizing principle, but sometimes a week after I do a coding challenge and publish this webpage, I'll go and click through a bunch. But I've missed a lot of your contributions. And then sometimes new contributions come in for projects that were made a year ago. So thank you to many people in the Coding Train supporter community um, who support uh, in so many different ways. But in particular, a big shout out and thank you to David Snyder, who um, uh, um, just I need to open up my direct messages in Discord for a second. By the way, if you haven't joined the Coding Train Discord, uh, there it goes. Uh, uh, Flip the camera. Oh, that's a good idea. I could flip it so that when I point this way, yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, um, so let me look for the direct message and let me get this up. Okay, so what we have that is new is um, this particular uh, wheel. So I'm obsessed with wheel spinning and luck and random numbers and probability. And so uh, I, I, as it, as as the sort of one of the, I think I've said organizing principle now twice in the last like two minutes, but one of my organizing principles for how I like to do things is to not make any decisions and let the magic wheel, uh, spinning wheel tell me what to do. So it's, it's a little unclear for you here and maybe there's, maybe some of you would like, maybe there's a way after today um, that David Snyder can uh, post this um, as a GitHub repo if it's not already and allow people to contribute to improve this. But this is a, uh, ran a wheel that when I spin it, I uh, will do that right now. This is based, I think, on, um, actually, 
some code that I wrote at one point, once or one time or another. And oh, and now I'm looking this direction. Okay, I sorry everybody. This was like I thought this was going to make sense, but I can't do it. Just you know, please hold. <laughs> I can't. I can't take it, people. I can't take it. Whew. Oh, I feel so much better. Oh my God. Whew. Oh, oh, I feel so much better. Oh, let me move this to the side here. Oh, oh my goodness. Whew. Whew. Oh. oh my God. Oh, oh boy. Oh, there's the wheel. There it is. It's right there. Oh, okay. <clears throat> As I was saying very professionally in my proper live tu teaching tutorial live stream where I am a person who knows about things and talks to you to tell you things. Um, this wheel is drawing from a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet has been carefully curated. I think I know that Kobe, uh, one, a coding train supporter and viewer also contributed a lot to this. Um, <laughs> Um, I helped put this together of all of your contributions. So every contribution that's on the website that I haven't shown before, that is also a valid URL, is now, could every time I refresh this page, whoops, it's going to pick randomly from that and I have a wheel. So we're going to start. The problem, one thing I think would be an improvement here is maybe having people's names uh, because then at least if you're watching, you could know like, oh, I'm on the wheel right now. <laughs> but uh, right now you're just gonna have to like wonder which number are you. <laughs> and it's, I, I recognize there's a little bit of an absurdity here because I'm gonna spin this like digital wheel and I have a literal book of a million random digits over there. All right, here we go. I need a wheel spinning sound effect, which I should just have this do, but I will go with this. All right, here we go. We're going to see somebody's community contribution. And it is going on to number one. Woohoo! Number one, are you out there, number one? Number one. Oh, you're my favorite viewer, number one. Come and give me a not a six feet away. The camera, by the way. I just want everybody to know so you feel safe and secure at home. This camera is approximately six feet away from me. I measured. Ah, a few more inches, just for... Uh, uh, just to be uh, overly cautious. Okay, now here we go. Ah, so I think what I do now is I click on this button, remove and view selected. It says remove and view selected. And when I click on that, it will take me to the page. So I have selected ray casting with maze generation contributed by Grilly86. So uh, if you're wondering first, what I can do is I can just click here. This is the particular coding challenge, rendering ray casting, where I took a two dimensional space uh, and put a little particle in it, shot rays out of the particle and measured the distance to various obstacles and then attempted to render it as a 3D scene, all with 2D canvas, I believe in the browser, something like that. So we could see, let's just for reference, I'll just click here. This is my, um, I don't remember how I did this. Oh yeah. This is, um, this is the code from the example. And what does this slider do? The field of view? Oh yeah, that's fun. Or the distance or something? Oh, uh, field of view, yeah. Okay, so that's the original code and the original challenge. And now we're gonna see uh, Grilly86's version, ray casting game with maze generation. Okay, so what do I do? So one thing, I mean, uh, one thing I always encourage people to do is think about your project uh, if there's any uh, being um, self-documenting or maybe even if you're submitting a contribution, you could link to say a post about it where there's a write-up and explanation that might have some instructions. But I think this, what this, I can see there's a button here. So I can really extrapolate this. That looks like there's a button. Every time I click the button, oh, oh, wait a second. I understand this now, and I, I just I shouldn't I shouldn't give this like feedback that now I'm feeling like was totally wrong because I think there's a little magic to me figuring out how to do this. I think the idea is that I have to figure out the maze, like I'm not seeing it, but I can walk around and slowly reveal it. Let's see, can I make it through? 
This is so cool. Oh, whoops. That way. I'm gonna, oh, dead end. Oh, shoot. I have to finish this. This is so cool. You audience are like the most creative people. That's a dead end. I wonder if this also used anything from my maze generation examples or this is a custom maze generation. Oh, I'm gonna make it. No? Yeah, there we go. What do we think? Turn? Yeah, this is the way it's gotta be it. I'm thinking I'm going this way. I'm a completionist. So uh, one thing that's gonna be an issue, we might only look at like one community contribution every stream. <laughs> because I can't bear to not finish things. Is there like a secret like, no. There's probably like some secret way to see the maze, but I don't want to know what it is. I want to solve this. Oh, come on. Yeah, this way, this way. That's the... No, other way. Yeah! <laughs> I won! That is a really awesome project. So, first of all, I love the interactivity here. I love the clever sort of idea of like, oh, we could use this rendering ray casting example, but not reveal the actual map itself. So my whole thing was really like a debug view, and this is just taking a very simple idea. The other thing is like, there's a big challenge here, which is how to like generate a maze every single time. Uh, looks like the color is random. So um, what could be fun is to think about, um, are there, um, are there little things you have to like collect along the way? Are there other types of ways that you can think about this this world or this terrain or this? So there's a lot, I think, more possibilities here. And I think this was really terrific. So congratulations to um, uh, Grilly86, which uh, let's click over to uh, see what their, their page is. Codeblock.at. Oh, I recognize this one. Uh, you can take a look. Uh, there's lots. It looks like there's lots of... Um, code examples here that are similar, if not uh, based on um, stuff that I do on my channel. So thank you for this wonderful um, contribution. <laughs> Big train whistle to you and we're moving on. So now I'm gonna close this and we're gonna do another one. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think that I'm gonna do this until, like for another 10 minutes. I have two other things on my agenda. I know one takes exactly 15 minutes, but we might like to do it twice, so it'll take 30 minutes. And the other thing will be at least 30 minutes. So, okay, uh, let's go here. Here we go. Round and round it goes. Where it lands, nobody knows. Uh, two, okay. We landed on spot two, who is amazed. <laughs> hey, wait a second here. Grilly86, did you hack the wheel? <laughs> is, something, is there something fishy going on here? Maybe Grilly86 just made a lot of contributions and this is just, the universe is telling me something that I need to uh, <laughs> feature. Grilly86, are you watching by any chance? Um, so, uh, oh, thank you for David for the, um, for telling me who the new members are, I'm gonna um, sort of, I, I definitely want to thank them in a second. So let me just look at this. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of gloss over this one because as we can see this, look at this. So this, by the way, if you're wondering, what is the process for developing um, an interactive um, art project, a game, a, a piece of software? 
One of the ways that I have always worked and found to be uh, most helpful to my process is by breaking a larger problem down into lots of subcomponents and working on them separately and then working later to assemble them. And so we can see an example of that here where here's a, uh, the actual um, maze generation itself without, uh, without the uh, ray casting. So nice to see that like by just serendipitously that we got to this other one. All right, let's spin the wheel again. Oh, and I have a reset numbers button. I didn't realize that, that's cool. Maybe we could have some kind of like, pre in the slices of pie themselves, there could be like a preview or like the person's name or something. Because these numbers, as much as I love numbers, and as much as I sleep at night with this random digits book under my pillow, curled up cozy with it alone, uh, no, well, whatever, never mind. Stop asking me about the various sleeping arrangements that are going on in this house. But, um, uh, as much as I do love my random numbers, I, I, I feel like a, a connection to the people who are here on this wheel would be um, nicer to have. Okay, here we go. Rigged, yes, the wheel is rigged. Uh, here we go, remove and view selected. Ah, prime, spiral, phylotaxis. The original challenge is phylotaxis. This is actually a pretty, by the way, if you're new here and you're looking for a good getting started kind of algorithmic generative art, project to, to tinker with. Um, this is a really nice one. It just involves some simple math and playing with color to create this uh, phylotaxis uh, pattern. So this is a pretty good, be fairly beginner friendly um, example to work with. So let's see what uh, Sam Lee um, got themselves up to with the prime spiral phylotaxis. Like to see the use of code pen here. Oh, okay. So I think what's going on, if I'm correct, and there's something I think, I believe it's called a ULAM spiral. Um, I believe what's going on here is that there is a number line that's spiraling around and that prime numbers are being highlighted in some way um, and that this is a particular technique that creates a visualization like this. That's a, the, just, the, just the design choices here have given it a very like um, spacey, almost like constellation-like uh, uh, quality to it. Um, quite lovely. Um, all right, uh, Arnav is reminding me that in the Philotaxis video, I said my favorite angle was 137 and a half. And it is today, still true today, that is my favorite angle. All right, great work, wonderful work. Thank you, Sam Lee, for sharing this. Um, I should have like a timer going on that gives me the, the sense of how much longer I have. Let's take a look at Sam Lee's page. This is Sam Lee's um, uh, code pen. Um, you can see there are a lot of uh, interesting projects going on here. I'm very curious about this one called Mom's Spaghetti. And here we go. So we're gonna close this and we're gonna do another one. Here we go, spinning this wheel. Ah, um, I'm being told breaking news here. Breaking news. I actually have a thing where I could get breaking news. I'm being told that um, three blue, one brown has a video on the prime spiral. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Oh, hey, rigged. <laughs> I'm only saying that I, I'm, I'm being funny. It's not actually, um, and um, I mean, I'm not funny. <laughs> Anything but. As the YouTube comments make it very clear to me, you are not funny. Stop trying to be funny. Uh, by the way, I'm not trying to be funny. I don't know what I'm trying to be. I'm, I'm just being me. You gotta be me. <clears throat> um, so David Snyder, the creator of this uh, wheel system uh, himself, has the A star maze solver. There's a lot of contributions related to the maze stuff here. I wonder if that's just coincidence or if there's something going on here. But this is, this by the way, this coding challenge, I don't know why, but it is, it was made quite a while ago and it is just on the top, like it's being suggested all over the place. <laughs> but what's really sort of funny to me about it, if I showed you my YouTube analytics right now, <laughs> is people are watching this video like crazy, but only for about one minute. So I know that's, 
fairly typical if YouTube is like weirdly suggesting some random video to a lot of people who wouldn't actually be interested, that that amount of time they watch it would go down, but it's very extreme. So anyway, this is a, a, a well-known computer science uh, pathfinding um, algorithm called A-star. This is actually, I think it's four or five part series. It's a pretty complex um, uh, coding project. Um, we can take a look. I don't know if this is gonna send me to the finished. Uh, let's refresh here. Yeah, so this is a visualization of the A-star algorithm um, playing out. Oh, there's my Discord behind me. Let me just, which is not that big of a deal, but um, let me just um, put that away while I move this over. Um, and then here we come back. Um, so you can see that uh, it's making this kind of like um, obstacle course and, uh, whoa, oops. Ah, I'm not really good with my buttons here. It's making this obstacle course and um, finding the, uh, finding a, ah, cry. No, stop showing me Discord. I think I will just quit out of it. There we go. I mean, there's nothing private there. I just, you know. <clears throat> so, um, what I love about this is it often has this like really like almost like lightning like quality to it, the way that it's showing different paths and jumping around between them and there's this very jagged uh, path that it's following. So in interestingly enough, I feel like uh, by thinking about another way of visualizing this and not showing the background pattern, we could create like a nice lightning simulator with it. There's a project you could do. Go take that and run with it. But I'm not here to show you once again my uh, video. We're here to look at the A-star maze solver by David Snyder. Let's take a look. Um, let me move this back over. I think I don't... Ah, so what I like about this, it looks like we've got an interface here where I can enter a certain number of rows and columns. Um, so let's try, let's leave it at the defaults right now. Looks like this is the start and this is the end. Boy, we're seeing a lot of maze solving today. That's the, the unknown theme. Um, ooh, animate generation. Right, by the way, this is from a different coding challenge now. I forget what this one was called, but I have a maze generation coding challenge. I could Google and find it. I'm sure somebody could share it in the chat or something. Um, but this is a particular algorithm for generating the maze pattern, which we're now seeing. Um, and then uh, restart. Oh, but I don't, uh, let's not anim So now the question is, how do I get it to solve the maze? What's, what happens next? Complete maze. There's the button down here, complete maze. Click that. And there it is, solving the maze. Wonderful. 10 minutes have passed, so Simon. Oh, and then it like backtracks and shows me the path that it went. Oh, this is awesome. Great job. Actually, interestingly enough, um, I actually have used my maze generation code to generate in processing PDF mazes that I have printed out and given to my kids to solve um, in between, you know, playing Roblox, that is, for, for you know, 30 seconds at a time. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, um, so thank you, Dave. This is great. I always love seeing um, these projects that have an interface. Like, I'm always curious if I change this to like five by five, uh, what do I see? Um, I guess if I hit restart. Oh, and I get like a tiny one, but if I can do the scale, if I do like 100 by 100 and I change the scale to five, whoa, look at this. Let's make the scale 10. And then can we solve this maze? Oh, I, so now we see this little, this little character moving around and trying to solve this maze. Super fun. All right, great work. Okay, um, let's do one more. I know I'm over time, um, but let's do one more. We're going to see uh, if, um, if we get something that doesn't have to do with mazes. Mm. So this would be really hard to do, but I have some other feature ideas for this now. One is the wheel could check, and if it's already added a contribution by a certain person, it doesn't re-add that contribution. Tricky because how do you know? You, we really don't actually, there's not like a database with users and accounts or anything, so it's kind of impossible to match, <laughs> but that would be an interesting thing. 
Um, was that really loud, the uh, drum beat? What happened? Uh-oh. I'm seeing the chat. I did something terrible. Oh, maybe because I paused the sound in the middle? Sorry, everybody. Sorry. Usually I try to hit this button, which fades it out. Okay, so let's see what this one, number 10 is. It is tic-tac-toe with invincible AI. Okay, a challenge accepted. So this is the, uh, the challenge is tic-tac-toe. Um, that's a, a video I made on just creating a little simple tic-tac-toe game that you could check out uh, uh, certainly. And um, where did I lose this one? Um, and I also made a video with uh, the Minimax algorithm, but let's see what happens. When I scratched my head, something else went crazy. Oh, it was the mic. Sorry, that's weird. Oh, I mean, I, could this interfere? No, it's, this is my mic here. I don't know. All right, I will, uh, I apologize. I hope that you're okay. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this one. All right, here we go. I will beat the invincible <clears throat> tic-tac-toe AI. <laughs> yeah, you can't beat me. Ah, shoot, I lost. <laughs> I swear I didn't do that on purpose. All right, here we go. <clears throat> I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, tie. Tie is kind of like a win for me because otherwise I lose. I'm clearly not gonna win. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you. I have beaten the invincible AI. Ha ha! <clears throat> it only took me four or five tries. <clears throat> I am, I, I, you know, I, <clears throat> I, I do enjoy myself a good solid game of tic-tac-toe. Whew, all right, that was fun everybody. Cheers. <clears throat> All right, thus ends the portion, I don't know, no, 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 <laughs> uh, I, I, I want a little theme music for my different segments now, you know, like, it's time for, it's time for community contributions. Uh, right. uh, okay. So now um, I'm going to move on to my next segment. And I'm quite hesitant to do this for a variety of different reasons. Um, there, so a lot of, um, so the Coding Train community uh, is mostly found in Discord. Um, just a shout out to CJ who was in the chat I know. Uh, Coding Garden with CJ has been doing a lot of this on um, his YouTube channel or, or Twitch stream. Um, a lot of people have been enjoying this new website called Coding Game or Coding Aim, Code Code Game, Coding Game, I don't know how to say it, but it's Coding Coding Game.com. 
Um, this is not uh, any sort of uh, sponsorship. I, I actually have been in touch with them because they emailed me and said like, hey, you might find this fun. Uh, maybe it will be a sponsorship someday. <laughs> Looking at you, co Kodaing Gami, uh, Game. Um, but um, I, th I thought I would try this out. Um, it is a website that has different coding puzzles and different ways you can kind of like compete against each other to either like finish the puzzle quickest or write the shortest amount of code. Uh, let me tell you something. I'm really, I feel like competition, the idea of competing or doing things the fastest is completely antithetical to the, uh, to the philosophy and point of view of this channel. Uh, creativity, fun, enjoyment, collaboration, play, all of those are, I think, the, the, the ways to engage with each other as humans through code and computation and stuff like that. So, and, and I think the good news is um, people will, so I, I wanna like, re like reduce the level of competition kind of like thinking here um, and just kind of have fun with it. I think the good news is I will lose every single one. I probably won't be able to figure out the puzzle. <laughs> actually really quite bad at this. So, um, uh, and, and that will help, I think, uh, ease everybody's um, um, anxiety or feelings and, and let's just have some fun with this. So what I'm going to do is, this is something you can participate in, but um, just as a kind of trial run here to get started with, what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna create, um, just please hold, I'm gonna create a, Clash of Code game, and um, how do I do this? Compete, practice, oh wait, there is a thing called practice. Practice, puzzles, I could just do the puzzles, but can people not join the puzzle? Um, I think I need to do compete for people to join, right? Um, all right, we'll do, we'll do compete. Clash of Code, I think that's what I'm looking to do. Clash of Code, Join a clash. Hold on, I don't know why I'm not showing this to you. Um, five to 15 minutes max. I don't wanna join a clash, I wanna create a clash. Ah, create a clash. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> oh, start a private clash. Um, David is asking me, I guess I, 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 I should have thought to do that. One, one of my new innovations is I can have uh, moderators who are watching and participating um, talk to me. And we'll, let's get that set up for next time because I don't, um, I think I can figure this out. So I'm gonna start a private clash um, and I'm clicking there. Okay, so now I have the link to this and what I'm going to do is I am going to paste this into the Discord uh, live chat. Where is the, so this is, go, I'm go, this is going out to supporters and members first. Um, and uh, uh, where's the live chat channel? Um, I'm gonna tag supporter so everyone gets a notification and there you go. So, um, so I'm gonna pull this back up and uh, we should start to see people joining. So these are people in the, oh whoops, uh, Coding Train community. We see CJ, is there a lot of names that you recognize? Uh, that you may recognize from various community contributions and things. So we're gonna attempt to do this. Oh, it starts in one minute. I didn't even configure it. I didn't even do anything to configure it. Um, if somebody wants to paste this into the, uh, I'm touching my face a lot, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, if somebody wants to paste this into the YouTube chat, um, we can get a few more people joining, or you can just, you know, I don't know, Type out this uh, URL. It won't take you very long. Just you know, memorize that and type it out. Um, so because uh, it's starting in 40 seconds here. All right. Um, so we're gonna see what happens. I actually have like barely used this, so I don't really know exactly what's going to happen. But we're all going to compete to solve some coding puzzle. Uh, oh, it's beeping at me. 23 seconds. <laughs> Okay. Reverse mode. You have to guess what to do by observing the provided set of tests. 
How interesting. So, hello world turns into drulalul. How much time do I have, by the way? 15 minutes, thank goodness. Um, hello, hell world turns into la 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 word. Jump turns into P, oh, oh, okay, well it's shuffling the letters. Is it shuffling them a particular way? P U J M. Uh, D D R W. Is it just shuffling them? It's got to be a specific kind of shuffle, though, right? Uh, all right, well, let's see what happens here. So I'm going to do this in JavaScript. Can I make this font much bigger? I don't know how. I'm just going to zoom in. So I think the idea here is this code reads in the input, and then what I could do is I can just, uh, I can get all of the letters in an array by saying split. I think if I just do split in JavaScript, it'll give me all of the letters in an array. Can I just like console log that in uh, this? So let's see, like what happens if I run this? Yeah, so we can see I got everything in an array. So now I could shuffle that array. Is there a shuffle, built-in shuffle function? What's the rules here? Am I about to look up stuff on the internet? <laughs> it starts from the end, people are telling me. D, no, because this one doesn't. Uh, it iterates over letters and adding new letters to the right and left alternatively. I don't understand that. You can do array from. Okay, well, hold on. Let me at least just, sh well, so it's clearly not shuffling. Take every other letter from the end. D R W L E. A and then the other way. But why is this one start with an L? That's not the letter from the end. D R W L H E. Oh, but it went back, it went the other. Oh, because maybe this is even. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this is odd. So let's first say if letters dot length. Uh, modulus 2. So if it's even, maybe I do it one way. Uh, so, uh, so I want a new string. So new s. Then I want to say uh, for let i equals 0. Okay, I guess I can do for, I know I like to, for every character in letters. But I need, I would like to have an iterator. Hmm. Um, okay. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> this is hard. Plus, the timer is pressure. See, see, by the way, I bet you everybody else has finished this already. All you viewers are so good at this coding thing. <laughs> it's very hard. I find it very, uh, there's like lots of people watching, and I'm trying to code some sort of algorithm. It doesn't have to do with even odd. No? All right, well, let me just do it for the first, let me get the first one right. So the first one is clearly the last letter. So I want to create a, um, uh, a counter is zero. And I guess I could remove things from this array. While, and then, so let's have the counter be letters.length minus one. Um, so that's at the end. Then I want to say um, while counter is greater than or equal to zero, uh, say the new string is equal to splice out, and let's just call this i, splice out that letter, and then um, Splice out that letter, and then, so there's lots of messages going on in the chat. I have to just not look at it. Uh, and then i minus equals 2, and then um, all I need to do is then iterate over 
the rest of what's left. Iterate over the rest of what's left and add those characters in and then print that. Why does this give me attempting to override new? Oh, that's a constant let. Okay. All right, let's see what happens here. So this is my idea. I take all the letters, I go to the end, and I start taking them off every other one, and then I add the rest back in in order, and we'll see what happens. Try. Oh, something, something bad happened. Failure. Found. Bracket. Expected this. Does this splice not do what I think it's going to do? Um, Letters.length minus 1. Letters.splice i take 1. Go back by 2. All the patterns alternate from center left to right. Um, wait, but I just want to get this thing to work, even though it's not right. <laughs> right? D R W L. <laughs> See what I mean? I was going to be so excited to see everybody's solutions and how elegant and nice they are. P U J. Like, why didn't this work? I have a blank string. I made them all, I made it into an array. Uh, new. Uh, but the array is, new s is not an array. New s is a string. People are telling me to say new s join. Like, look at this. Um, this should be a single... Let me print new S and I. <laughs> uh, like bracket. Oh, oh, what? It made this a uh, what? I got what? What? Print new S D R bracket. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, because that print is there, it thinks that's the output. Oh, I don't understand how this works. So it doesn't look at the last print, it looks at whatever prints you do. There needs to be like a debug thing. Oh, to debug, you s it says it right here. <laughs> Way to read instructions. So uh, the debug messages, you should use console error, the answer with console log. Yeah, it was correct. Oh, wait, I ran out of time? <laughs> I ran out of time. <laughs> Oh, oh, I ran out of time. Oh, I'm really bad at this. Oh, yeah, what, what's giving me an ad? I'm not interested. <clears throat> okay, uh, now what do I do? Did I run out of time? No, I still have five minutes. It just was like beeping at me. Oh, okay. So this was correct. This was not correct. Found this, but it expected this, which is that in reverse. See, I think it's like... It's just reversing it if uh, it's, why is it reversing this one but not that one? Is it because it's an odd number? I think it's because it's an odd number. And people said no to that, but that's what I think it is. So how do I reverse, is there like a string reverse? Is that a function? Um, so if s.length modulus two is one, uh, new s equals new s dot reverse. 
That worked. Uh, no. Found nothing. New s reverse is not a function. Oh, come on. It's a, there's an array function. Add the letters to the left or right sequentially. Yeah. Um, so there is a way to reverse an array. So I could just say up top, um, if I could do it here, then I could say letters equals letters reverse. Why? What's wrong with this? Attempting to override letters, which is a constant. Yeah, it's not a constant anymore, people. Correct? No. Found H L W R D. Oh, I can't reverse. So I have to reverse it after. <laughs> um, I have to reverse it after. Okay, so I could split it again. Okay, I could. This is so ridiculous. I'm. So, <laughs> this is so funny. What I'm gonna do? I really need a bigger font so you can see this. I. I'm going to write the most, uh, we're going to see all sorts of elegant, amazing code that people do. If it's one, let's, um, let's split it up again and reverse. Let's split it up again and reverse and then say new s equals letters dot join. And then, so this should be uh, taking it, oops, making it into an array reversing the array and then joining it back into a string and I'm reusing variables and doing all sorts of terrible stuff. But I like it. Correct? No! Found E-L-O-L. L, what? Hold on. Oh, I don't have it right. <laughs> Just start with the second last letter. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> second L L O L E H O. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so uh, I see. That's what it is. Of course, of course, it's not reversed. Um, I I I realize. Uh, okay, let's see. So now uh, what I can do is. Oh, I reversed it up there also. I reversed it in too many places. But it's actually just the second to last letter. That's what it is. Uh, if, if it's odd, then, uh, then I, and there'd be like a really nice way of doing this based on, oh, based on the modulus itself. So minus one minus s dot length modulus two. Look at this. Look at this fanciness. Look at that fanciness. Oh yeah, that's gonna do it, I think. <laughs> One minute, 22 seconds left. One minute, 22 seconds left. <laughs> okay, I like my solution. I like my solution. Look at that, it's so nice. It's very weird, and I, I guess I have a minute left, so I could kind of like adjust it and make it better and nicer, but let's look at other people's. So I'm gonna hit submit, and we can see here, I guess, um, I guess the, uh, the, um, the metric here is how fast it was done. So um, I think that I, who spent 14 <laughs> minutes, should get a prize for spending the most time thinking about it. It was very, I did very thoughtfully. <laughs> uh, and we can look at people's code. So let's go click through everybody's code. That's kind of the interesting thing. Let's look at uh, S. Tim's code, who did this in Python in one minute and 55 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now I'm really getting a clue into a way that makes sense. First of all, you know, I'm not a big Python uh, user or programmer, but sometimes you just see this Python code and you're like, oh, mwah, it is so beautiful. I must look at it. Just soak it into my eyes and into my brain. So you can see here, A, uh, uh, not knowing Python, looks like S is the strength, string. A is every 
uh, index into that string because a modulus two is one. If a modulus two is one, oh, you could just take it. That makes sense. You could be putting characters on the end or the beginning based on whether you're even or odd within the string, and then you can compile a string like that. So this would be interesting to rewrite this uh, in JavaScript this way. <laughs> okay, there we go. Next, we're gonna go to DT6. Ah, look at this with a join and reversed and oh my my heart my head hurts. So so this is the other thing. I mean, I think there is a lot of fun to this, and there's certain value in the sort of puzzle solving and the enjoyment of like reducing the number of characters. But for me, I optimize my code writing to be very long and to be as ex to explain what it's doing as much as possible. So um, so, but it's nice to see all these other uh, possibilities. Here we go, CJ, a professional code clasher. Um, in, ah, this is very smart. So, okay, this I can relate to. So this makes a lot of sense. Basically, uh, looking at, you can use for each, oh no, for each with an array. So splitting the, same, same technique as me, splitting the string, then using for each instead of my weird for of loop. And then with for each, oh, you get the letter and the index. Ah, I love that. That is so cool. I, I never think to use for each, as many of you know from watching the channel. <laughs> but I never think to use it, but there's such a benefit of using, uh, of getting the iterator. And then if it's an even letter, you push it at the end, unshift adds to the beginning. Boy, I did mine in such a weird nonsense way. <laughs> Readability is the word I was looking for. Thank you, uh, Bruno. Um, so uh, th this, uh, this is great. Thank you, CJ, for this. It is, you know, I, uh, this is a really nice thing to see. You know, I just, I'm known, one thing I don't have at my fingertips is what all the array or string functions are. So I guess, you know, I guess this, is, this should be treated like an open book exam. I mean, there's no reason why I shouldn't look up um, what they what what the array and uh, string functions are. Okay, we've got Kobe, who did theirs also in JavaScript. Read line split join split. That I don't understand. Why is there a split by a space, then a join, then a split again? Rules, you can look up stuff, you can take your time, you shall have fun. Everyone is a winner, even if 0% of the test works. Every, I, no, truer words have never been spoken. Thank you, Kobe, for these wonderful rules. These should be uh, the rules. Okay. Uh, thank you, Peter, for your uh, very kind feedback. Um, also explaining, saying, uh, this is, it's nice to have the, uh, uh, f uh, of kind feedback in the chat that I can see every once in a while. It keeps me going here. Where, where are we time-wise? I don't have my, um, I am at 11.15. I've got till noon. I've promised family time from noon on for the rest of the day. So we're, we're, we're good, we're good. I, th I could do one more of these. I don't know, we'll see. Um, so I, uh, uh, um, Kobe is typing, so maybe I'll get an explanation here. And then this is going every other, pushing, pushing them into two separate arrays, reversing one of the arrays, concatenating them, and then joining it back. Cool. I kind of don't fully get why this works, but uh, I, 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 it would be, it would, it, the, the, I, I, I can, I can under, I can, I can get a sort of like sense of it, but I, I would love to like work this out. Um, pencil and paper. In case there's multiple words, the split N removes them. Ah, okay. So this was just Kobe um, being overly, uh, 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 considering other cases that, that, that didn't seem to be a part of the test. But if there had been multiple words, this is kind of splitting them up separately and removing the spaces. Thanks for that. Okay, let's look at uh, Galva Bart. I shouldn't go, I should have gone in the reverse order, um, but okay. And then uh, this is some more Python. So I don't actually know what this means because I don't know Python. <laughs> Somebody in the chat will hopefully explain it. Um, but that must be doing something very clever here. And we can see this is this very similar idea of concatenating the array based on even and odd, which characters are which. Okay. Um, Eugenio Bruno, wonderful work. I can't see your code if you don't hit, um, share code at the end, I believe. And then Das G, 
Um, let's also in JavaScript. Let's look. Ooh, I like this. This is the this is the code I like. First of all, is this an umlaut? It's hard to see because the font is so tiny. Um, but I love that read line split. Uh, and then this is very much more similar to mine. Depending on even or odd, uh, concatenating up together, reversing it, um, and then going through it again. What's that beeping in my ear? Code clash just like beeps every once in a while. What, what's going on with that? What's up with that? <laughs> um, and then console logging that. Awesome, cool. Okay, you know what would be fun for me is a, a versions of these that are like reproduce this drawing or reproduce this animation. That would be a fun project that, I mean, <laughs> we don't know if we're gonna like build a coding game competitor just as a coding trained community, but I would really love in terms of using P5.js and working on like algorithmic visualization to um, sort of like see like, give me a Mondrian painting and let me try to like write some code. It's like running tests and that sort of thing. I, you know, I mean, you could do like pixel by pixel checking, but in a way it would just be more of like a general creative output. Okay, oh, I missed, there's more. Okay, I gotta keep, oh, I was, I, I, I didn't realize that I was, oh, I didn't hit share my code. So share my code, we all saw mine. Let's look at uh, David, which has another similar uh, Python version. Um, Arnav, which is a, a much simpler way of doing what I did, which is going from, uh, starting from the last, last character and then going back to the first character. Um, and oh, but this one didn't work. Ah, okay, so let's look at Arnav's. Uh, and David's also I, uh, didn't work. So that's interesting. So it shows you if they didn't work, um, we can sort of look and figure out. So I think this is, the issue. This is where I started. Um, and Kobe is, uh, uh, people are giving me information about the Python. Um, so maybe, I wonder if I can pull, give me a second. I'm just going to pull up your messages um, because those would be nice to see. Um, so let me, um, so the, the, so hold on a second. I'm pulling up a Discord for a second. And um, so uh, Simon says uh, S colon colon negative one reverses an array. So that's a, some kind of special code for reversing an array. And then um, S X colon Y colon Z means get the array from X to Y with step Z. If you omit X, it defaults to start. Oh, so there's like Python, I suppose, has all these really fancy ways of chunking and chopping and and segmenting and reordering arrays that um, I'm not familiar with, but that's really, really cool to see. Um, okay, um, let's see. So I, I'm getting a sense from the various chats that I'm seeing that people would like to see one more. Um, and thank you, Simon and Amr, for participating as well. Um, uh, people would like to see one more of these. So let's try one more, and then I want to talk about um, something new that I'm developing, which is neuroevolution examples for the ML5 library. And then we'll be done for today. Uh, people are wondering about this shirt. Um, what is the beeping? <laughs> what is the beep? No one's told me what the beeping is. Like every so often there's beep in my ear, and it's the Code Clash website. Okay. Um, let me go back to my camera. Oh, I'm on my camera. And let me get another one going. Starting up a new one. So, um, so here's what I would like to say uh, for these code clashes. I would like to give the most, peop most people uh, who are watching a chance. Um, just for now, I don't know that I'll always do it this way. I'm posting this in the supporter channel first. I don't like any sort of like tiered systems, but this is just the way I'm doing it for today to kind of ease into this. So if you already did the previous code, uh, um, 
If you already did the previous one, um, maybe sit this one out. And also I would say if you're watching and you feel shy um, or if you're like not sure, like come and join, don't worry, this is fun. I, 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 um, I need, to, uh, you know, we should all, like, give this a try. Um, oh, people following me on the website might beep. Maybe that's what's going on. Okay. Uh, all right, so um, I, uh-oh, shoot. It's already, I didn't post the link and it's already starting in 45 seconds. So how do I get it to take longer to start? I gotta make a new one. Uh, I'm gonna leave this clash. Okay, sorry, <laughs> here we go. I'm starting the new one. Create your own Code of Clash puzzle. Homemade puzzle editor. Huh, so that's definitely something I wanna get into. That would be nice, start private clash. All right, here's the link, here it comes. Okay, and I'm also going to post it. If somebody could immediately uh, post it maybe in, the, and uh, here it goes. Now, um, I'm coming back so we can see. Um, there we go. So we've got people joining. Um, and it's going to start in one minute and 31 seconds. Oh, whoa! Oh, I guess it filled up. I'm in reverse mode again. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Uh, the game mode is reverse. You do not have access to the statement. You have to guess what to do by observing the following set of tests. Five, two. Five numbers separated by two. Five, three. Five numbers separated. Oh, this one! That other one was much harder than this one. Three numbers so this, this, this I can handle. So, um, all right. Is there a setting here just to make this font much larger? So uh, read line split gives me the two numbers. And so I have number one and number two. So the first thing that I want to do is I need this many numbers. So first I want to have a counter start at zero. Then I want to go from this, or I guess I just, I don't need a counter. I'm going to do a loop. What am I talking about? I'm going to do 4i is 0. i is less than uh, the first number, which is 5. i plus plus. And then we need a string. So the answer is a string. And I'm going to say answer plus equals. Uh, oh, I, well, I guess I could, let me have a variable, like a value. Started at zero, plus equal, and does it start with zero? It always starts with zero. Value, value plus equal r. That's how much it goes up. And then uh, answer plus, plus equal value, and then there's a space, right? So this should be, this should be, I think this is it. I mean, I haven't really, let's see. So uh, let's just run it. Throw a caution to the wind. No, I didn't get it right. The, the expected output is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and I found nothing. Uh, value is 0. I is less than that. So let's do, let's make sure everything's coming in right. Console error. This is how I debug. Console error n comma r. Is that how I debug? 5, 2. Okay. I is 0. I is less than n. Answer is a string. Let's add, what happens if I just add value to it? Um, and let's try that again. Found 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So I'm doing it right. I just didn't put the spaces in correctly. Um, so, I mean, I know I could do this. Oh, is, am I going to have an extra space at the end and that's not, it's not going to like that? Let's see. Why did it get nothing? Why did adding the space turn it into nothing? Is the last space messing? I should see it but have the last space. I mean... I don't, okay, let's try trim. Trim will take off the extra space. Oh, what? 
but why wouldn't it log the whole thing with just an extra space? Um, I understand that I need to remove the last space, but why without doing that? Yeah, but why did it say nothing as the, I think that's a bug. Because look at this. Oh, it found, oh, I'm re reading this incorrectly. This is what it found with the extra space. Expected, confuse me, why, what do you mean expected nothing? It should show me what it expected, which is this, right? But I could also keep them, uh, another way of doing this would be keep them as an array. So let's do this. Yeah, this is a good idea. If I keep them as an array, the answer equals value, um, and then and then console log answer join with a space. This is another way to do it. And ding 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 ding. And I will now submit this. I'm happy with my answer, and we'll give it. Oh, it has 10 more minutes. Okay, I think I can start to um, look at other people's uh, solutions while I uh, while other people are finishing up. So let's start. Let's I <laughs> um, I don't want to go in order. Um, so let me go from let me go from um, this one here. Oh Java! Oh Java! Java! Mm, uh, I don't know what sound to play for Java, but it's something good. It's like um, it's like a beautiful sound. Do I have a beautiful sound for Java because I love Java? I don't. I just say, thank you. Thank you for picking Java as your language. I will now do a dramatic reading of this code. Class solution. Public static void main string args. Scanner in equals new scanner system dot in. Int n equals in dot next int. Int r equals in dot next int. Int num equals zero system dot out dot print zero. For int i equals one, i is less than n i plus plus. Num plus equals r. System out print. Quotation space quotation plus num. Close bracket, close bracket, close bracket, close bracket, close bracket. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's so great to have a language where you just, it figures out the way that you have to write the most amount of code to do the task. I love it. Okay. Um, so let's see what's going on here. This looks very similar to what I did. Um, it's just, uh, I don't know what this scanner is. I have never seen that scanner. Um, uh, but I guess that's a way of like reading in, uh, this must be the boilerplate code it gives you, reading in the user input. <laughs> All right, thank you. Great work. I love to see this. Um, Grusel House. Um, let's take a look. We've got some, what is this, JavaScript here? Um, let's take a look. Out is zero, string, uh, string concat. Oh, I like this use of a string literal. So that I like, the use of the string literal, which is a way of having a variable. What's interesting though is there's a string literal here, but no other <laughs> characters besides the variable. So my suspicion is if you just put out in here, it would actually work, but who knows. If i is not equal to n minus one, so as long as it's not the last one, add the, so that's another way to do it. Don't bother to add the space, but don't add a space if it's the very last one. Um, 
concatenate up and console log. Excellent work. Um, C sharp, a language I do not know, but ah, oh, but once again, I, don't, I need a nice, just like, I love it sound. C sharp has the quality of looking very much like Java, which I quite enjoy. And we have console read line split, which is much more sensible. Um, we, we make a list, a list full of integers, add i times r. Ooh, I like this, the multiplying of r. That's a clever thing that I didn't think of. And then join with the space bar. Excellent. Um, now we are up to C++, and we see... <laughs> There's some bit shifting going on, I think. Um, so this is pretty interesting. There's like all sorts of crazy bit shifting, but then you're going to ignore. Oh, this is just the, this is just getting the input. That's so weird. That's how you get the input? Crazy. And then this is very reasonable. And I guess this is C out. Is that not bit shifting? I don't know what this is. Oh, is that how you set something? That's C out. Uh, I don't I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. The interesting thing is C and C++, those are some of the first languages I really programmed in. So in theory, I, I should know what this stuff is, but I don't remember. Ah, it's saying this is how you use C error debug, C out, okay. And then now we're going to uh, Python, which I'm sure we're gonna see this is now gonna be in about four characters. <laughs> uh, once again, going through the range, concatenating uh, I times the, so using times instead of plus equals each time through the iteration is a nice way of doing it, and then joining with spacebar. That is super fun to see. Cool. Uh, it's an overloaded operator is what I'm being here. That's for outputting in the console. Okay, okay, standard in, standard out. Okay, 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 I got it. I got it. Why don't you all get together and pick one person to correct me? <laughs> okay, uh, it's not bit shifting. I don't know why I thought it's bit shifting in other languages, I guess, because that's how I think of it. And then we have uh, another JavaScript one, which looks, uh, which is all the same ideas synthesized down, but uh, much less code. Um, we've got uh, Remy here in a Python. Ooh, whoa, interesting. This must be some, is this some kind of like string literal like thing in Python? Um, like format these variables into a string. Um, that's nice to see. Uh, we've got, and then we've got two not uh, sharing the code. And then, come on, climlml, climl, climl. You can do it. You can do it. Still clashing. How much time is left? Three minutes and 25 seconds. Oh, 10. I missed 10? Okay. Oh, Kenneth. I think this is Kenneth uh, processing. I'm, I'm just guessing because I saw Kenneth in the chat, processing contributor. Um, in Python, uh, yikes. Whoa, I like this. Interesting way of getting the input and then print F. Oh, this is just for like looking at the error? Oh, this is a way of printing a, oh, this is a way of debugging. I got it. And then concatenating the array. And uh, so nice to see this in Python. I love how you, when you can initialize things with like the variable comma the other variable and it just sort of like puts one into the other one and one into the other one. What a nice thing. <laughs> uh, we now have, um, did I look at this one? Oh, whoa! The, this, would, this is like uh, winning the prize for um, shortest code. So let's see, can I, one of the things I like to do that I think when you, when you see really short, um, very obscure, almost impenetrable code as we try to uh, 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 translate it into uh, a narrative English, okay. N and R equal the integer, an int, a number, uh, which is, uh, a, 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 okay, so actually let's, let's start from the other end. We're gonna take the input, we're gonna split it up, and then we're gonna have two things in the input. They're both gonna be in I, and each one of those I'm gonna turn into a number, and I'm gonna take the first one and put it in N, and the second one and put it in R. And then I'm going to print out uh, 
for all of the numbers within n, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to print out um, r times n. So 0, if, if r is 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And then I don't know what this star does. It like, this is like, it's kind of like an accumulator. Oh, we could probably in JavaScript, this would be a good reason to use that accumulator uh, function. Um, we get, we get, what does this do in Python? This like star at the beginning. Does anybody know? Somebody will tell me, I'm sure. And then, uh, I guess I don't have to refresh. It refreshes automatically. Um, and we've got uh, 45 seconds. So we'll see if K, uh, KLIML um, appears, unpacks an argument. Oh, and we have. Welcome, Sebastian Von Blau, to the passengers of the coding train. It's so nice to have you on board the train. For your membership in the coding train, you have won yourself <coughs> a random number. And that random number is 32,218. Once again, I'm um, donating the proceeds from anyone who signs up as a new member in April to uh, Masks NYC for PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, and I'm also matching those, um, matching those membership fees for the month of April. Okay, um, spread operator. Ah, Klimi came in right under the wire in Java. Oh, I love you. I love you, Java. You are my one true programming language love. Let's take a look at this. I love this. <clears throat> um, anytime anyone does one of these in Java, I, I requi it requires a dramatic reading. <laughs> Everybody ready to go to sleep? Class solution. Curly bracket. Public static void main string args. Scanner in equals scanner. Parentheses system dot in close parentheses. Int n equals in dot next int int r equals in dot next int int i equals r system dot out dot print zero for int j equals zero j is less than n minus one j plus plus i plus equals r system dot out dot print space plus i Okay. Um, what's interesting about this particular solution that I like, and it may have been in other ones that I didn't notice, is that they always have a zero to start. So this is starting with the zero, so that then you can just put the space beforehand and the last one won't have a space after it. So this is one way of getting around that trim by like always starting with printing the zero. This is also interesting, instead of accumulating all of the, um, the string and then printing it out all at once, Print, in Java, if you don't use print ln, it, does, it prints it as an individual character without a line break. And so you can actually print the elements one at a time, which is kind of nice. So um, thank you very much. Uh, wonderful. This was fun for me. Um, I have, here's my feedback about coding game. I, um, I would be interested in a similar sort of mechanism for, um, with, with less, um, with creative output. And I would like to think about ways to make this feel less like a competition and more like a collaboration. So that's something, but, but these are fun and maybe we'll do that. Um, we'll do more of these in a future challenge. El Capitan, did I not look at yours? Oh, I missed it. Sorry, thank you, El Capitan. So, um, Captain, oh my captain. Uh, start with an array and just, so this is really nice. This, and, and by the way, I wonder if I could use, there's gotta be a way to use fill, like the array, fill function or like the acute, some of these higher order functions. Um, people are asking for another one, but I, I have to go and I wanted to talk about ML5 neuroevolution. People seem to really enjoy these. <clears throat> I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking. All right. I, so 
I would be happy to do more of these and it, it, it's possible um, it's possible that I could even consider doing some uh, live streams that are just doing these. Um, we'll see. I'm thinking about it. I'm enjoying this exploration. Please, one more. You guys are just like my kids, which is so funny. I'm having like PTSD here because I'm, I'm reading. We're on, I'm reading all the books of Harry Potter out loud. And I'm on the fourth book right now. Uh, oh, if you if you haven't heard of Harry Potter, um, it's uh, if you just uh, never mind. I'll make a bad joke. I'll, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Um, and they're always like, one more, one more, one more chapter, one more, one more. And I, I have such trouble saying no, and I'm feeling the same sort of thing. Yeah, so by the way, um, Kobe, who's one of the viewers, if you join the Discord, has been streaming these coding clashes on Twitch. I know that um, CJ has been doing them. And so this is something that could absolutely people could do just in the community, in the Discord, without anybody streaming them and that sort of thing. So I would encourage you, it's a nice activity for people to learn and enjoy and experiment with each other. It certainly is fun. Um, yeah. So um, everyone's saying plus one. All right, all right, fine. <laughs> ah. Then I'll just... I'll do one more, but then I'm gonna, and then I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do an overview of the neuroevolution stuff, and um, um, just to let you know what's happening. Okay, fine. One more. One more. One more. Ah, okay. Ah, so Kobe, but uh, Kobe gave me a um, um, uh, 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 important note. So we do, we're doing these in the in the coding train Discord, which uh, just the link will go into the chat now. Uh, we do code clashes regularly on Discord. Just join the Discord and do. T, oh, there's a bot. So if you type it on the Discord, TR exclamation point clash, so train exclamation clash, you get notified when, notified when there's a clash um, and people can stream them actually just in the Discord. So you don't even need to like have a Twitch account or a YouTube account or anything. And then mods can use TR exclamation point clash ping URL to notify clashers that one has started. So, um, Okay, yeah, <laughs> I, yes, all right, so fine. I'm gonna do one more, but let, because I wasn't clear. This is, I literally feel like I'm talking to my kids right now. <laughs> Just because I, I wasn't clear, I didn't make it clear. I didn't say this was the last one, so this will be the last one that I will do. But I, I pop in on Discord and do them also, um, without, while I'm not live streaming. So let's do one more. Okay, one more, <laughs> one more. Um, so what I'm going to do, again, uh, I saw some of you did the second one who did the first one. Right now, I don't have any bot or system set up to sort of enforce. This is just where, this is the honor system. If you've already joined one of these, I would ask that you not join this one. Um, and um, if you're feeling like shy and you might get it wrong, I really want you to do it. I think it's much more interesting and fun when we're all struggling and making mistakes. It's no fun to see uh, 15 of them all somehow done in one minute with one line of code. So everybody join in. If you've done one before, don't join. I will do the same thing. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to post the link to the clash first in the Discord. As soon as somebody sees it there, please just post it right to the YouTube chat and it'll, it'll, that'll sort of like, that'll be our system for right now. Uh, okay, so I'm going here. I'm going to create a new clash. Uh, here we go. Well, I'm muting my microphone for a second. There's another like streaming Zoom thing going on in the next room. It starts at noon. That's another reason why I have to get off at noon. But noon is almost 50 minutes away. Um, and let me go and do one more. Um, clash of code. Um, I can never find the place to start one. Okay. Ah, here we go. Uh, start a private one. I've got it. It's going into the Discord. There it is. And there we go. So if someone wants to post that into the YouTube uh, chat, 
Um, and we'll see if people join. <laughs> Simon, I think you were in the first two. Simon. <laughs> I know you. your enthusiasm is infectious and wonderful, and I understand why you can't resist. Uh, D, I love your rainbow icon. We've got a bunch of people here. I love that there's a kitty cat there. Reverse mode, okay. Hmm, weird. What is going on here? Four becomes 24. Uh, one becomes one. Two becomes two. Three becomes six. Five becomes 120. I am really stumped. I'm quite stumped with this one. Something to do with the prime number or the number of fact, fa no. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, wait a second. One times one is one. Two times one is two. Three times two is six. Four times three is 12? No. Five times five factorial four. One times one is one. Two times one is two. Three times two is six. Four times three times two is 24. Factorial. Okay. Factorial. Uh, oh, this is great because this is a nice, uh, this is fun for us to learn um, recursion. So there's a lot of different ways you can write uh, the factorial. So um, this is. Uh, I'm going to take some time here to explain this. Um, uh, I'm sure everybody in the chat had it way before I did. Um, but let's take a minute here. This is a nice little excuse to do a little lesson. Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson will be on factorial. Factorial of the number n, for example, is defined as n, oops, sorry, uh, n times n minus 1 factorial. This is a wonderful, beautiful thing. What it means is that I'm defining factorial according to itself. This is the concept of recursion. I am defining something by its own thing itself. It's like a thing that you shouldn't be able to do, right? I can't say that the definition of factorial is factorial itself, but yet I can. And this is like a thing that appears in mathematics, in nature, this, these recursive algorithms. You know, I have a lot of, of videos that um, draw these recursive trees, like the idea of a branch is defined as a line segment that's connected to two branches, which are therefore each connected to two branches which are therefore each connected to two branches, and so on and so forth. So while with factorial, you could see how if I have five factorial, I have five times four times three times two times one, and four factorial is four times three times two times one, right? I could definitely write a loop to do this, but um, there's a way that I could actually write a recursive function. Now, one thing I didn't uh, mention, this definition is incomplete, because I also have to say one factorial equals one. 1 factorial equals 1 because uh, this would otherwise go on to infinity. So uh, let's try to write this uh, as a recursive function for my solution. Um, and we'll see if um, anybody, um, we'll see if anybody uh, chooses to do it with a loop or in a different way. So I'm going to write a function. I'm going to call it factorial and it's going to receive a value. And I'm going to return, I'm going to use exactly this definition right here. Factorial is defined as n times n minus 1 factorial. So if I go back to here, I'm going to say return n times n minus 1, oh, times factorial of n minus 1. Now, if this were actually, if I had this as my code, I'll, this is the equivalent of having an infinite loop. It's a loop with no exit condition because factorial of 5 is 5 times factorial of 4, this is type 4, 5, 4, 4, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1. So I need to say, oh, hi, Gloria. You came back to see me. 
My puppers is here. It's going to have a little nap there. She, actually, you know what? It's also time for... There's so many reasons why I have to end at noon. <laughs> so I also got to take her for a walk. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't met Gloria, she will be making an appearance in the next Coding in the Cabana video, which will be out It's soon at some point. <clears throat> um, so I also need to say uh, if n is zero, I don't really if it's one, or why don't we say if it's less than uh, or equal to one, return one, else return. And by the way, I, I never write code this way, but um, an if statement, if there's only one line of code coming after it, you don't need the curly brackets. But I don't like to do that. I like to things to be as long-winded. I also <laughs> can't deal with the four spaces, so I will correct. Code in Games Editor, which is clearly doing it incorrectly. But you know what? You be, be a rebel. Use three space tabs. That's what you should do. And now I should be able to say console log factorial of n. What did I? I'm sure I got something wrong. Let's see. Let's run some of these tests. Oh, success. Success, success, success. Oh, it's doing a lot of tests. They're all right. Okay. You know what? Let's do this in a different programming language that I don't know. Should we try it in C? Let's try it in C. I don't, dude, that we don't know closure. <laughs> uh, what is D? I never even heard of that. Um, Python, oh, I'm afraid. Let's try C. Um, oh, it just like, if I go back to JavaScript, is my answer still there? Thank goodness. Um, or, uh, uh, let's try C, okay. How do I write a function, int factorial n, uh, is the same thing gonna work? Return n, return n times factorial n, if n is less than or equal to one, return one, else return this, Int n scan and print f answer. So, ooh, isn't there like a way? Don't I, don't I have to do like int answer equals factorial of n? And then, how do you print something in in C? Print f. Like, isn't don't you do something weird where you like? Isn't it something weird where you do like? Um, oh yeah, it's like scan f percent D because I'm pr printing a number and then I give it the memory address of answer. Is that what I do? Uh, no. Return. Oh, I need a semicolon. <laughs> Got to have your semicolons in C. Oh, there's, and I'm being told by the way that there's loads more languages. Whoa! Oh, I wouldn't do PHP. Oh. Uh, let's check. No! <laughs> Error reading, but cannot access memory. Uh, uh. Oh, int n. I have to give it a data type. No. Percent D, yeah, I did that. Is this function not available? Segmentation fault. Function factorial cannot access memory and address on line 23. Int. Mm. What's wrong with this C code? No ampersand here. No, but that's not the issue. It's like this works. Something about the way I define my function is incorrect. But that's not the error. Oh, 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 n minus one. Thank you. <laughs> no. Expected 
Found five, expected two. Um, oh, right, because <laughs> now I'm not putting the answer in, okay. I forgot about n minus one, okay. And I think, by the way, I was supposed to put the backslash n here, but big deal. Okay, now let's check it again, test it again, and now I will submit my C code, or should I submit my JavaScript? I'll just submit this, and we'll take a look at some other uh, examples. Let's look at, oh, Java. So this we're seeing, at, this is the way of doing it with a for loop. So this is not doing it with recursion. You could just start with one and multiply all the values together all the way up to the last number and print out the result. That's fun, thank you for that. Um, we could, um, oh, this is using what? Scala? Reduce? Whoa! So reduce must be similar to, um, there's a reduce in JavaScript, right? Is that this? Yeah, the reduce, I kept seeing accumulator, but there's like, um, so reduce is a way of performing an operation. Like if you wanted to add up all the values in an array in JavaScript, the reduce function will allow you to do that um, by defining like a callback function. It's, called, it's known as a higher order function. I'm not able to explain this right now, but uh, if you search for higher order coding train, um, you'll find that I have a bunch of video tutorials on higher order functions. And then hi MPJ with a very different look. This must, um, from 2015. Um, all right, thank you. Uh, so this is cool to see Scala, which has this interesting object solution thingy Um Let's look at Amy Goodchild in JavaScript. Welcome Amy Goodchild to the live stream. Um, let's take a look at your code. And here we go, a lovely, mwah, beautiful for loop. This is nice. So the recursion was an interesting, fun little digression that I enjoyed doing, but this is a really nice way to write um, this. I'm wondering if anybody used the reduce function in JavaScript. Bash? Bash? Whoa, that's pretty cool. Do a, is this a dual while loop? Is this a dual while loop? <laughs> I love that you use the dual while loop. I never can find reasons to use dual while loops. Um, you can see using bash just to surprise you with some random language. I realize there's a flaw here um, and I, I, I guess is that I, the, I usually, if I'm having things that a viewers are sort of like collaborating with during a live stream, um, I usually like to check them in advance. Um, and I suppose people could I get the, I don't, uh, do some trolling in the comments, but so far we're, this is working out well. Um, Auto-generated code, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is Python, <laughs> once again, nice four in range. I love these four in range loops that I'm seeing in Python. Uh, Phil, this is C, maybe it's uh, C++. Um, so once again, now I know this is not bit shifting, this is getting input and a nice little while loop to multiply uh, everything up. While n, that's interesting. So the exit condition n as an integer, when it gets to zero, evaluates to false and then exits that loop. That's a pretty cool thing, I love that. Uh, Simon, once again, <laughs> here we are, we see in Python, ah, recursion. <laughs> Little train whistle for recursion. <laughs> Did not forget to say factorial n minus one instead of n. I like that you have this colon with the if else. Def def for like to find a function. Lovely, lovely. Gotta love that Python stuff. Uh, here's another one. Uh. <laughs> and scene. Math.factorial. I suppose that's, is that in JavaScript too? Um, I guess it's, yeah, I don't think it's, there's math.factorial in JavaScript. Um, that's, that's great. And Sybil, another uh, recursive function in Python. That is great to see. And we've got um, another one here. Whoa! Uh, I'm not sure why this one maybe didn't work. It looks good to me. Uh, system out print line. So I'm not sure why this one didn't pass the tests, but it looks right. Um, and we've got one more, CC. We'll wait and see uh, if CC 
How much time is left in this one? 20 seconds. All right, CC. Okay, everyone. Um, thanks for tuning in today. Um, I, I, I have one more thing on my agenda. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm out of time, I'm over time. Oh, now we see um, CC's code appeared. Um, and factorial n, int number. I think the issue here, and I don't know C sharp, but my, I think what's missing here, why this didn't work, is number probably needs to be initialized to zero. Because otherwise, if, it, if in JavaScript, for example, it would be undefined, and even if you're correctly um, multiplying uh, accumulating and multiplying the, so the numbers together to do factorial if you don't start with a number um, and actually shouldn't be initialized to zero it needs to be initialized to one because oh but number equals n times i oh but you're not so this should be number equals one and then number equals itself times i and i starts at n so I think this is just um, there's a little bit flaw in this solution. It's a great start because it's really the right idea. We start with a number. We have to, one at a time, start from that number and go down to zero, but not at zero, multiply the values together and return the result. So this, I think, if I'm right, this should be number equals one, then number equals number times i, and then return number. So that's what I think it should be. Return n certainly isn't right because that's what's coming in. So, and it might help you to have this be like answer because I think of it as like, oh, it's the answer that I'm multiplying things into. n is just the starting point of the factorial itself. Great work. I'm so glad yours came in, CC, right there at the end and we were able to look at it. I hope that was helpful to you. Mwah! Thank you for participating. Big heart. Um, all right. So the thing that I didn't get to is okay, uh, because I'm just gonna show it to you real quick. Um, and I, I would, I'm going to come back and do a proper tutorial with it at some point soon, but right now let me just open up uh, iTerm, then I gotta go take the dog for a walk, feed the kids lunch, do some other activities, get on with my day. Um, so, um, so, this is gonna, this is, there's no good segue for this because I'm just like leaping into a totally different world. But a library, uh, a machine learning uh, JavaScript library that I spend a lot of time working on is called uh, ML5.js. So if you haven't seen ML5.js, you can find out more about it by just going to ml5.js.org. Now I have made, um, let me see. Oh, shit, sorry. Um, if you go under learning, under ML5 Beginner's Guide, I have all of these uh, video tutorials. And in particular, I wanna highlight the ones um, um, that are related to ML5 Neural Network. So ML5 Neural Network, um, ML5 Neural Network is a class that allows you to train a neural network with a data set right there in the browser. And ML5 is a, a wrapper around TensorFlow.js, and I've talked extensively, spent way too much time um, in all these videos on this stuff. So one of the, th one of the a video that I have on my channel, NeuroEvolution, just search for NeuroEvolution Coding Train, I have done several iterations of this concept of NeuroEvolution, which is the idea of evolving a neural network um, to perform a task in some kind of simulation. So years ago, I made this like toy JavaScript neural network and made some neuroevolution videos with that. That's this 11.1, excuse me. I did a coding challenge with Flappy Bird. Um, and somewhere here, if I add TensorFlow.js uh, to this Google search, um, you'll find there's even a video then that's neuroevolution Flappy Bird with TensorFlow.js. So this, consor this, this concept, I've made videos about ad nauseum. But what's exciting, what's new here, is that I have been working on adding um, neuroevolution features to the ML5 library that will make working on a neuroevolution project much simpler. 
So I'm going to just go here under pull requests under uh, closed. You can read about this in two pull requests. One is um, um, this one here, new neuroevolution functionality. Um, then there, then also this neuroevolution mutate fix. So you can um, you can kind of follow the progress. Um, I've kind of written about what it is I was doing, and apologies that I'm covering up part of the screen here, um, in terms of how the API works. Um, and you can sort of like follow, see some of the code changes. This is not in the newest release of ML5, but I just want to show you a new example that I made. And if you bear with me, Um, so by the way, one thing just to point out here is I have the ML5 GitHub repo cloned, downloaded to this laptop. That might be something that's totally unfamiliar to you. If it, if it is familiar to you and you want to try out this neuroevolution feature, um, you can do so by um, building the library yourself. So if you download the library, navigate it to, to your console, type in npm install. I will do right now. And then if I do npm run build, this is actually building the library. I, I already did this, so I, I shouldn't, I should probably, this takes quite a while actually. <laughs> um, so uh, since I did this, I'm going to just quit it. Um, if I go into that directory, you should see Oh, weird. It's gone. Usually there's a distribution folder from when I build it. Maybe it's, maybe I, I didn't build it here. Ah, sorry. I built it, I built it in a different, like on a different computer logged in a different way. So let me actually build it. Um, while I'm doing that, you can also say npm run start. And what npm run start will do, and these are all commands that are related to node package manager npm. This is actually also going to build the library, but it is going to locally host a version of the library um, at localhost 8080 ml5.js. So you can see now this is actually the built library um, that is built. And what I can do is I can take a look at some of the, the examples. I'm going to go into the examples directory into p5.js. I'm going to run a server. And I'm going to go to neural network. And there are three new neuroevolution examples that you can take a look at. And again, I'm going to eventually make video tutorials to walk through all these line by line and build them up slowly to explain them. Right now, I just wanted to show people who might be interested that they're there in case you want to dig into it and contribute or play around with them, see how it works for you. But um, before I click on this example, I want to show you what this is based on. So in um, the Nature of Code book, in, uh, if you're not familiar with, this is a book about physics and simulation and processing in P5.js, which you can um, read all at this uh, website. So there is a particular chapter here, chapter nine, which is about genetic algorithms. And one of the examples in chapter nine, nothing to do with neural networks, um, is this particular example. Uh, evolve flow field. So what this example is doing is each one of these particles has inside of itself this genetic information, this genetic code. And that genetic code is actually an array of vectors that are covering its world. So and they're, when, when they're born, it's random. When the first population is born, it's random. But I'm using this evolutionary technique to take particles, take these creatures that happen to be born with a set of vectors that push them farther towards that target, that are getting further along the way to that target over a period of time. And I'm mutating those and passing them off to the next generation. And over time, the system will evolve to have these particles kind of make a beeline straight across the screen to the target. So this is something that's covered in the Nature of Code book, and I've made videos about how to build this example. Incidentally, I'll, I'll note that this example, um, you can actually draw obstacles, and uh, it will continue to adapt. 
This I made it quite difficult. I'm gonna just like, uh, before I go, I'm gonna just leave this up in the corner here and I'll check in on them. Um, they will like adapt and eventually be uh, making it to the end. So I'm just gonna leave that running there. So what I'm working on now, right, inside each one of these particles brain is a literal 2D array of vectors. But in a lot of cases, in a lot of types of uh, game and simulation environments, the search space for what it needs to know about might be so vast that it couldn't possibly hold inside of its brain. Like here, it's possible for me to just have, it's like a, a brute force, have every single particle know about a vector everywhere in the, in the space. But what if I had an infinite space? Or what if um, the, the environment wasn't just about like, I just need to know where my X, Y is? What if there's a lot of things I need to sense that could be in an infinite number of configurations throughout my environment? So what if instead I had a neural network that could just receive some inputs? Like what if it receives, in this case, its X, Y location, and the neural network estimates a vector that should come out of where it should be going based on its location, which could be translated to things like not its location, but like its, you know, its relative location to other you know, predators or prey or food or poison. You can imagine all sorts of kinds of ecosystems and scenarios you could evolve. That neural network could output where to go. Now, traditionally, this is the domain of reinforcement learning. So you might have a reward-based system and use this reinforcement learning technique to optimize and train the neural network to make the best decisions in the space. But my, the technique that I'm exploring is neuroevolution. So what if I make a population like this, give them all a brain, and ask them to uh, over generation over generation evolve. And so um, I'm just giving you the sort of like high level picture of this. And let me show you the example that I'm working on that does this. So if I go back to here and I go to neuroevolution path, this is the, uh, oh, and let me go back to here. This is the example right now running. Now it's not as sophisticated as this one. And let me also make this run much faster. It doesn't have obstacles. But each one of these particles has a neural network that gets two inputs. The two inputs are its x, y location in the space, and the output is a vector telling it what its velocity should be. So over time, you can see that they together are sort of finding their way towards this target. And I'm actually just going to click up here. I'm going to move the target. You're going to see that they're going to start to evolve to change to change and follow and, and move up towards the the green target now that's in the top right so let me just show you a couple bits and pieces in the code of this example and then i'm going to be done for today i'm going to come back um you know and i'm still working on this and try to make some videos about it where am i here so let me open this up in visual studio code um, and let me go to neural network um, exam, neuro evolution path uh, particle. So the idea is that, you know, this particle, like all my examples typically have like a physics engine in them where a particle has maybe a position. This is very much like, the, by the way, this is exactly like the smart rockets coding challenge. I forgot. I forgot about that one. This is basically redoing the smart rockets count. I'm just not calling it smart rockets. But in all my physics examples, particles have position, acceleration, and velocity. So you can see that there. It's just like any of the particle system examples that I have countless videos and examples about. What's new is these particles now have this neural network. So I can just make a neural network brain. And what do I have? I have two inputs because the inputs are its x and y location, and I have two outputs. Its outputs are um, its outputs are so the two. These are the two inputs x and y. The output is a vector. So one. So I need two numbers for that because sorry. If the output is a vector, one number I'll use for the angle of the vector and another number I'll use for the magnitude. Because one thing you'll actually notice is they learn to slow down when you reach the target. You'll see this. They're, they actually learn like, to like, sort of reach it uh, more slowly. Oh, you can't see that right now. So ah, so you can see now they've, they sort of switched to the target up there. I'll click down here so we'll see them adapt again. Again, this is a very trivial scenario, 
like them just using their x, y to find a, like a straight line to a path. But it's, it's to me, that's, uh, this is my study to prove that the concept can work. And in theory, then we could have a much more sophisticated environment and ecosystem where they will learn. Um, so let me just show you here. So here they get this neuron. Now you shouldn't be confused by the fact that these are both the number two. That's just kind of a coincidence in the scenario. Um, in Flappy Bird, for example, I'll show you that in a second, there's five inputs because the bird is looking at its location, its velocity in the y direction, the nearest obstacle, where the pipes are. So there's, I'll show you that scenario in a second. But what I th what's, what's new here is this. So in this function think, it's basically, this is using the neural network. And let me see if I can give myself some more space here. The, it's making an ar input array, which is its x and y position normalized to the width and height of the canvas. The out, it sends it to the brain. Predict sync is the function for getting synchronous output from the neural network. It goes into this outputs array. The first output value, I multiply it by two pi to get a vector with an angle. And then the second, and then the second value, I multiply the, the the velocity vector's length by that value times five. So this is really first I set create a vector with a direction, and then I scale it according to the second output. So that's what I'm getting here. And then um, what's different is I uh, what's new here with the genetic algorithm. This is in all of my genetic algorithm examples, but I have this. Um, I have this, um, sorry, this is the function that I want to look at. Um, I have, this is, I have, um, this is exactly the same as all of my genetic algorithm examples that walk through this algorithm <laughs> that I'm <laughs> going to sort of skip going over right now. But um, basically what's new is ML5 has a crossover function. So if there are two, these are two ML5 neural networks. I can mix their weights together. That's what crossover does. It mixes the weights. And then the mutate function will, 1% of the time, tweak a bunch of the weights, and I can make a new one. So each generation, there's, you don't have to implement mutation and crossover yourself. You can just pick the, the particles you want, the ones that got closest to the target, reuse them and mix and match them for the next generation, and the system will evolve. So, I mean, there's lots of missing pieces here. You would, if, if this is completely new to you, you would want to look at my uh, genetic algorithms coding train videos. Um, so I have a set of videos that go through um, genetic, the genetic algorithm process in detail. And then the, I have videos that go through the neural network process in detail. Oh, they're almost there, right? Look, one of these has almost made it to the end. Um, and so this is just something new that I'm working on. But what I, my next step, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is some of you might have ideas for this, is I think this population class, right now in the example, I'm making my own population. But I think it might make sense for me to say something like population equals ML5 neuroevolution. Or maybe, maybe it's ML5 population. Because all of these functions that are like calculate fitness and reproduction, all the stuff that I've got in my code itself, I think that's something that could, it's really just going to be the same for every example. So the new thing that I added to ML5 is the mutate and crossover functions. And the next functionality before I finish these examples off and make tutorials about them is maybe adding, um, and is maybe, is, is adding an ML5, uh, neuroevolution or population function. I haven't figured that out yet. So that's coming. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you just so you see what the other example is. Um, the other example is, uh, where, where am I here? Um, by the way, the reason it hadn't evolved yet because I hid the tab and the animation shuts down when I do that. That's why I keep this one open. Come on, make it to the end. I want you to make it to the end so I can log off this live stream. I Remember, I'm a completionist. If they haven't solved it, I can't bother to. <laughs> I can't shut off the stream. Uh, so this is the Flappy Bird example, which you know I've done countless times. If I let this run for a little while, um, it's just, again, this is each generation of Flappy Birds trying to uh, sort of figure out when they, whether it should jump or not jump based on its environment that it's in. And at some point soon, we'll probably get one that will start to go for a long time. Um, 
usually it, 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 it sort of finds a solution much more fat, much more quickly. So you can, these are two pretty good ones. So you can see these, oh, come on, you can get up there. Yeah, good work, good work. So this is using neuroevolution to basically, uh, you know, uh, to play Flappy Bird. And just looking at the code for this one, what you would see that's different, if I go into the bird class, you'll see there are five inputs. The other thing is this is classification because the only thing the bird has to do, like unlike getting a, a vector, which is a regression, what angle, what magnitude, it's just one of two options, up or down. So it's a classification problem. You can think of it like if you had a, um, if you were training a neural network to play uh, Pac-Man, up, down, left, or right. Um, so it's a classification problem. The outputs are labels. And then you can see here in the think function, it's basically taking five properties, features of the environment. It's Y location, the closest pipes, top and bottom, the closest pipes, X location, its current velocity, and then sends those into the neural network. And if what it gets back is up, then it calls an up function, which causes it to jump. So I wanted to show you these examples. They're there. Um, join the Discord if you're having trouble finding them or knowing how to like access them. Um, I'm not finished with them, which is why I'm not doing a full tutorial about them yet. But you know, sometime, eventually, hopefully that will be coming on this channel. Um, so I'm going to get going. <laughs> but um, I'm going to, oops. No, I wanted to leave this open. I gonna, I'm not going to turn off the stream until they've solved it. It's this one that I want. Can I do this? OK. So um, come on. Ah, they so one of, the, one of the flaws, by the way, there's a flaw. Like you can think about why is, it, why is it having so much trouble, like finding the solution. Ooh, that was a good, that was good. That was a very good thing that happened. Um, the reason it's having so much trouble is that the fitness is the distance to the target. And so unfortunately, right here is actually, like right here is actually closer to the target than up here. But it's much better for it to go up here so it has a chance. So I have to, through the mutations, I have to get lucky and have a bunch of them like figure out to make it around. You can see that one just did. So I think this is actually gonna finish really, really soon. I'll see if I can answer a few questions um, before I go. Anything in the chat? Anybody have any questions about these neuroevolution examples? And then I'm gonna sign off for today. Well, I'm like a half an hour over. Oh, they made it. What timing. The little, the little, those little particles, they made it to the end. You can see. Uh, did they actually make it there or just really close? I don't know if they've actually made it there. Let's zoom in and see. Doesn't look like they've actually made it. But for all intents and purposes, I feel like they've made it. Um, am I still streaming? Yes. <laughs> I just, um, can you make a video about chess machine learning? Oh, that'll be hard, but maybe someday. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in. This is my new plan is to try to stream once per week, eventually at a regular time, to show community contributions, to show things that I'm working on uh, more informally. Um, and then um, I'll be doing some um, recording sessions making specific video tutorials. And by the way, uh, for the supporters in Discord, some of those I will just stream those recording sessions so you can tune in and participate in those that way. So um, thanks everybody. Um, I'm going to, um, hi D, I'm glad you like rainbows too. Um, not on streamer mode. I don't know what that means. Um, oh, in Discord maybe. Um, I am going to go. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe, stay home, take care of yourself, be kind to each other. Um, take some time away from screens if you can, uh, but if you enjoy coding and want to engage with the Coding Drain community, um, here's a link to the Discord, and um, I look forward to seeing you all um, next time. Goodbye. I didn't take a break. Usually I take a break in the middle, I forgot.
So this is random, this is noise, Perlin noise that is, in the core random algorithm, the actual random algorithm itself, those numbers aren't related at all. You pick, like, I'm picking random numbers between 0 and 10. 9, 2, 7, 6, 1, 9, 4, 8, 9, 2, 1, 3. I pick 9 a lot, of times. But with Perlin noise, I might pick numbers like this. 3, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 4, 5, 6, 7, 5. Seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six. So this is like Pearl and Noise performance art. Nine, two, seven, six, one, nine, four, eight, nine, two, one, three. I think nine that much. Three, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four. So this is like Pearl and Noise performance art. So this is hurling noise that is hurling noise. So this is hurling noise that is hurling noise. So this is hurling noise that is hurling noise. So this is hurling noise that is hurling noise. So this is hurling noise that is hurling noise. So this is hurling noise that is hurling noise. So this is hurling noise that is hurling noise. So this is hurling noise that is hurling noise. So this is hurling noise that is hurling noise. So this is hurling but with Perlin noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five. Well, this is like Perlin noise performance art. Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that. Look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, let's do it. Kittens and 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 kittens. I feel just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's going to be okay today. Dream is not broken. It has not frozen. This is a this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're going to do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. Thanks. 
that I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is, yes, kittens, kittens, kittens. I'm really losing that mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and 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 kittens